Good morning. If you would all please stand and let's start our morning off joyously singing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. The words will be on the screen or in your hymnal on page 170. If you would please stand. Please turn and greet your neighbor and tell them how much you love them. Okay, let's continue praising God this morning. Again, the words are either on the screen or uh, in the faith we sing, 22-23. They'll know we are Christians by our love.
Let us receive, repeat the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It is good to be back in God's house this morning, and we're so glad that each one of you is here. We're so glad that the weather's warmed up, so anyway. There are several announcements in your bulletin. First, though, if you would be sure you sign the attendance sheet inside the pews there. And if you are a visitor, a first-time visitor especially, would you please put your name and address and a phone number or some way to reach you? We have a little gift for you, and we appreciate your being with us and worshiping with us this morning. There are several announcements in the bulletin, and you can read those later. I uh, want to especially call your attention to, so you can mark your calendar, uh, Sunday, May the 3rd, which will be here soon, which is graduate June, May. I'm backing up. Sorry. Yes, it's already passed. See how late I am. June the 3rd, Graduation Sunday, we'll have a combined service in here. Uh, Alan says that the graduates wanted to have their graduation service in this big sanctuary. So we'll have a combined service here uh, on that Sunday. So be sure and mark your calendar for June the 3rd. There will be no kid steps this evening because... Shannon Moser's husband, Trey, was taken to the hospital last night with chest pain, so we certainly want to keep them in our prayers. Uh, there are some other things, including the, some meetings that are going on this week, and you can read those uh, at your leisure. Vacation Bible School will be coming up, and they need folks to help and sign up for different jobs there so that we can make sure our children have a grand time at that. Are there any other announcements? Okay. In that case, let us prepare our hearts for prayer. And we're so glad this morning that uh, Diane Catlett and Donnie Finch are both with us. And so we want to remember those and others on our prayer sheet in our prayers this morning. Our call to prayer will be on the screen again or in the faith we sing, 2224, make us one, and our response will be trust and obey God's word. No, excuse me. We'll be bind us together. I looked down at the wrong line. So let's prepare our hearts. Let us pray. Gracious Father, 
We do thank you for the privilege to be in your house this morning. We thank you for the blessings of this past week and ask for your guidance and grace in the coming week. Lord, let us be open to hear your voice and to follow the path that you have for our lives, to look for you for our direction. As we see the trees, the flowers, and the grass coming back to life with the warm weather, and we're grooming our lawns and trimming shrubbery, remind us how you trim the dead, unhealthy things from our lives. Faithfully trimming and pruning what is no longer vital in our lives helps us to be the best that we can. Hear us, Lord, as we pray the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. pray. Father, thank you again for all your blessings and all that we have. Lead us as we give back to you so that your kingdom can continue to grow here at Archdale Church. Amen.
Please be seated. That's because I'm going to get you up in a minute. So. Good morning. good morning. It is so good to see each and every one of you here this morning. And um, again, as Peggy said, if you are a guest this morning, we are so glad that you have been a vital part of this congregation and hope that you will return to worship and praise God's holy name with us. For that is what this Sunday is all about. It is us giving back to God in praise for what God has done for us, seen and unseen. So thank you for being here. We are continuing our journey in John this week again. This, uh, as you recall from past sermons, this is Jesus' last week. Uh, we celebrated Easter, but we continue in, in studying that to hear what that last week was about and what Jesus was challenging his disciples to do, what it meant to be a disciple as he had that last week and he knew it and he had to really stay up late and teach them and, and give them the, the things they would need, the instruction and what it would mean to be a radical disciple for Jesus Christ. And we continue this journey this morning in the 15th chapter as we continue the story of the fruit that we talked about last week, the grapevine and the branches. We are the branches. And this week we continue those next verses that Jesus gave to his disciples and us. Before we hear God's holy word, may we bow in prayer. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you for these holy words, these words of instruction from Jesus. What does it mean to be a follower, a disciple, a friend of Jesus? Am I a friend? Open our hearts for transformation, Lord, and when you knock, may we open the door for that transformation. Give us the courage to take that step. May the words I use be yours and yours alone and bring only honor and glory to you. For it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Hear now these words of Jesus as Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. 
I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will stand for just a moment, please tell your neighbor, God loves you and so do I. Please be seated. Uh, if, if you didn't catch the words in the scripture this morning, it was all about love, was it not? And following my commands, and if you are my friend, then you will love one another and, and so forth. And that's why I think it's vitally important for us to stand and to remind ourselves of what that love is all about. I can remember um, being in school and loving one another and what does that mean? Now when you're in elementary school for, for young boys to love girls the way Christ wants us to is impossible, right? Because girls have cooties. I heard that. And the remark was, boys have cooties too. <laughs> That's why little girls didn't want to be around little boys either, did they? As my face turns red. <laughs> because boys had cooties too. And then I remember hearing my mother tell me that story of we are to love each other. We are to love one another. And to hear that as a minister would preach and, and teach. And to go into Sunday school and hear those words of loving one another and not understanding them. Knowing what it's like to be bullied in school and then hearing those words, love one another. It's hard. It can be very hard. And if I can be very blunt and honest this morning, this can be a place at times where one of, we as, as fellow Christians, sisters and brothers who are to love one another, I have boy friends and girl friends in church, do I not? Because we are united as the body of Christ. Therefore, I have sisters and brothers that it well go beyond Glenn and Leonard, sisters and brothers in Christ, and yet sometimes even in the church, we find it hard to love one another. Will Willimon was talking in one of his discussions, and, and I saw he, he had a person he was talking with out in the community who did not go to church, and they were talking about Christianity and the per, Will talked to him about Christ for a while and what do you think of Christ? And he said, oh, I can handle Jesus. This Jesus is interesting. Well, what about the church? And the person made the comment, I just don't see Jesus. Where? In the church. It can be hard for us when our feelings have gotten hurt, whether at home, at school, whether at work or whether in the church, to love one another. And yet it's one of those commands, and hence the sermon, do we like obeying? We in America who have our own ways of doing things, we've been taught we, we're, we're the richest and most powerful country in the world. We've been taught by society and school that it's up to us to go after what we want in life, to push it through, and it's our gifts and graces, it's our smartness 
but it's gotten us where we are. It's, it's all of this. It's me, my, my. I, I, it's all about me, and, and that's why I am who I am and where I am in life. If I'm going to succeed, then I have to be the one that pushes it forward. There's something in our culture that says that. It's about us. And yet here's Jesus today in the scripture that really pushes against that notion. And it says, are you willing to obey? There's something in Jesus if we listen this morning and hear it again that he talks to us about. It's about who we are and what we're about. Jesus says, I am about love. I am about love. And if you are going to be my friend, notice Jesus this time didn't say servant. Up until this time, he's talked only about being a servant. A servant to Jesus because he is the master and a servant to the world. But now Jesus shifts it. Not that we forget about being servants at all. But he shifts the conversation. He said, you are my friend. You are my friend because a friend knows what a friend is doing. A friend shares intimately with another friend. A friend learns all about his friend. He knows the quirks and the things and what makes them tick. That's what a good friend is all about. And Jesus said, you are my friend. If you were a servant, I would stick you in the room. You would never hear the, the, the nuts and bolts of who I am and what I'm about. You would never understand who my father is and what it means to be God three in one. You would, you would never hear that from me. You would not understand it. I would put you in a room by yourself and snap my finger or ring the bell and call you out to serve me. But that's not what you are. You are my friend. I have shown you. I have shared with you. Everything that I am and, and what I was, what I am now and will be, is all right here in front of you. I have shared who God has been with you since the beginning of time. I've shared all of that with you. Therefore, you are my friend. But if you're going to be my friend, uh-oh, here he goes. Why did he have to do this? Then you have to obey my command. Ooh. In this world that I want to do things the way I want to do it, I want to run a church the way I feel like running it, I want to be a part of committees the way I want to be, I want to do all of this, Jesus has to come in and say, if you're going to be my friend, you have to follow my commands. And if you're going to be my friend, you have to love one another. Mm. Mm. You have to love your friends. Loving is not the easiest thing that we can ever do, is it? It's one of the hardest things that we'll ever try to do in our lives. And yet it was Jesus who came into this world and he loved the world. Even those who would eventually nail him to the cross. Even those who beat him, who mocked him, who bullied him. Notice the word I'm using, bullying. Jesus was bullied. And he wasn't just bullied by the Romans and the Jewish leaders back then. He was bullied by every single person in this place right now. Think about that. But Jesus, even those who had bullied him, who had hurt him, who had whipped and beaten him, who spat on him, he loved them. He loved them enough to go and die for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You have heard that Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a 
famous German scholar and teacher. And one of his most famous books is on discipleship. If you want a book that will challenge you, read it. He came to America and he taught and he, he decided that as World War II was beginning to ramp up that it was time for him to go back home. Now he had peace. And he had shelter here, but he decided he had to go back home. And it's interesting, his journey, once he went back over there, here's his story of how he went over there. And I wanted to let you look at these two people. Bonhoeffer, the one who was a, 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 a Lutheran, one of our sisters and brothers in Christ. We may be United Methodists, but we're all united with all denominations of Christ. Bonhoeffer went back. He went back home because he felt called to lead and to stand up to the Nazis who were bringing tyranny to the countries around them and to the people of Germany. And yet it was Bonhoeffer who read the same Bible and the same books as a child that author Forbeck read. Who was Forbeck? He was the one ordered by Hitler to put Bonhoeffer to death in the last days of the war. For you see, Bonhoeffer had made it all the way through until these last days before the ending of World War II in Europe. He took a train, Forbuck did, to Flossenburg to where Bonhoeffer was being kept. He stopped 20 kilometers from the killing camp, the concentration camp. He secured a bicycle and rode 20 kilometers to make sure that Hitler's order was carried out so that Bonhoeffer would be killed in obedience to Hitler. Two men, both Lutherans, both worshiping the same God, reading the same books, and yet came to a different conclusion on what it meant to follow the commands of Jesus to love one another. Each of these men were obeying a voice, my sisters and brothers, but they were entirely two different voices. One's savior was Adolf Hitler. The other one's was Jesus Christ. One was willing to love one another even if it meant death, the other followed someone who wanted to rule the world and annihilate those who were not with him. The commands of Jesus can be so hard sometimes. And it's hard, and, and it's hard for me to want to sit and listen and then follow those commands that he has. And then he adds the icing on the cake to me. He said, if you love one another as I have loved you, and you follow my commands and will be my friend, then you will have a more joy-filled life. Wow. Yes, but Jesus, it may send me to a concentration camp. It may make me go up into that bully who's bullied me at school for the last two years while I'm in uh, junior high, elementary, high school and you're telling me to go up to extend my hand and to tell them God loves you and so do I. It's that person in church that's annoyed you or whatever. And you just don't get along and it's God who's telling you to go to them. Put your hand out in sincerity and say, God loves you and so do I. And from that you will sleep better. 
Your life will be better. Joy will fill you as never before, Jesus said. Because that's what the kingdom of God is all about. You know, sometimes when I can't sleep at night, it's because things are running through my head. It's that time when I'm not letting go of things. It's when I'm not truly in joy. I, I, I must admit, I'm not sure I'm really Jesus' friend because I want to hold on to the things He's not holding on. And I'm not willing to do that. And Jesus comes back through daily devotions, the upper room or other things that I read. And, and it's amazing how that devotion will come and speak to me that day. And say, you know what? What, what are you holding on to that God wants you to let go of? What are you holding on that you're worried about that God's not? What is it in your life that God's calling you to do that may make you unpopular? But in that you will find joy because joy comes from the love of Christ and listening to Him when I turn it all over to Him. What is it? What is it? What is it? And yet it's our Savior who was willing to sit the disciples and the other people who were in the room with Jesus or in the area and tell them sincerely and honestly, just like my parents would do when I would stray and I wouldn't study or I would do something I'm not supposed to, and most of the time they would sit down with me and have a conversation. And that conversation would hurt. But it was a conversation I needed to hear so I could be the person that God had called me to be and my parents knew deep down that I could be. That I could be. This morning, my sisters and brothers, as we kind of prepare to leave, it's a time for us to begin to truly hear these last two weeks of Scripture. Are we going to be the vine or the branches off of the main vine, Jesus Christ, that produces the fruit? The fruit that's not for us, remember. It's the fruit that's not for us to eat. It's the fruit that we are to take out beyond our walls. Are we going to be the disciples that hear this message that says, if you're going to be my friend, then you have to follow my commands. You can't pick and choose which ones you like and don't like, which ones step on your toes, which ones are easy, which ones are not, which ones kind of make me squirm. The ones that will help me to experience life the way Jesus did, even in the midst of his persecution and his temptations by the devil, he was able to enjoy life. Because joy came from being obedient. Joy came from loving everyone, even the very ones who were going to punch the nails in his hands and in his feet and pierce him in his side. The last words of our Lord and Savior, one of, Father, forgive them. That's love, is it not? Father, forgive them. For they do not understand what they are doing. So what would it be if we loved one another as Jesus has loved us? What would it be if I befriended Jesus by following His commands, knowing that He has given Himself and love to me first? I never came to Him. I never initiated. I didn't start it. I'm not the one that continues to start it. It is Jesus who initiates the love in me, who gives himself up, who risks everything to know so that I could know him, I should say, who is vulnerable in front of me so that I can truly understand who Jesus is and will forever be. And in kind am I truly honest in front of Jesus Willing to be vulnerable to my friend that I call Jesus. 
to share everything and allow Him to share everything so that I will obey His commands not as a master with a club or a billy stick over me or a set of handcuffs if I don't but as one who will keep coming back to me to change me, to transform me to make me new and afresh so that I can love the world as Christ has loved me and the world. That's hard, isn't it? That can be hard. My older brother Leonard one day went out the side to play with his best friend David Bailey. Alan, the four-year-old or so, decided to follow Leonard to play. Leonard turned around to Alan and said, where are you going? I said to play with you and David. And Leonard turned around and said, no, you're not. Go back into the house and play with your brother. Alan followed them along as they took more steps. And my brother Leonard stopped and turned to me and said, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to go play with you. No, you're not. Go back and play with your brother. They started moving again. And Leonard said, where are you going? I'm going with you. No, you're going back inside to play with your brother. Alan took one more step. And Leonard being the mean brother, <laughs> took his fist and hit me in my shoulder. And it hurt. He's four and a half years older. And I ran back to the house and I cried to my mother who believed that I was trying to get my brother in trouble and punished me. That's the truth. It is God who says to me that I must love my brother whom I do and forgive him whom I kind of have. <laughs> Can I finish the story? Six years ago or so we were in King and my brother had come down from Philly. And we were talking about growing up and all of this and things were going on when we were little and playing together. And my mom looked at my brother Leonard and said, Did you hit him? <laughs> and my younger brother Glenn began to laugh because he knew the story. And my brother Leonard began to grin. He looked mom in the eye and said, yes, mom, I hit him. My mom, tears began to come up in her eyes. My hand went up and I said, yes, redemption has occurred. <laughs> I say this story as laughter so that we can be joyful. It was when we were kids, and I love my brother Leonard dearly and my brother Glenn. We are tight. I'm glad I have the family I have. I'm glad I'm the middle child in between Leonard and Glenn. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But we know how it can be when we're growing up, and we just would want to smack our brothers and sisters. And it takes everything we have to hold it back. 
There are days in this place we call church that we get upset with a fellow sister and brother and it takes all that we can to hold back, maybe not physically, but the tongue. We have people at work that annoy the fire out of us and it takes all that we can to hold it back. But Jesus is calling us to go beyond that. He's calling us to love them. Just as He has loved us in forgiveness and wholeness and acceptance of the imperfect people that we are. And so today we have to choose, are we willing to follow His command? A command that He died for. Loving us with His own life. Are we, my sisters and brothers, willing as sometimes arrogant human beings, that's me, willing to submit to the commands of our Lord and Savior and to love one another and to love each other as a friend and as Jesus loves us. And by the way, who are our friends? They're not just the people in the church, are they? Jesus said, your friend is Adolf Hitler. Is the bully who bullied you. Are the people in the community that you have no clue, you've never met them. They're our friends too. Will we love them? As Jesus has loved us. That's hard. But that's Jesus. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for what you have done for us and how you have shared with us. You've given to us. You, you, you've been honest with us even when honesty sometimes hurts and makes us think and, and makes us change. You have loved us. And you continue to do so. And we say thank you. Be with us on our journey, Lord, that we will love one another as you have loved us, that we will be your friends and obey your commands by being your friend. Because the flip side of that is if we do not obey your commands and we do not love one another, then we are not your friends. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the times that we have not. Strengthen us that we will take that strength and use it to become better friends to one another. Even when we want to take our fingernails down the chalkboard because it's driving us crazy. Loving someone. That we will remove the hand from the chalkboard. Turn around to the person and say, God loves you and so do I. I truly love you. Be with us. That we will be a church where people see and hear. And that they will know we are not just Christians. But we are friends of you, O oh Lord. By the love that we share with one another. And the love that we share out in the community. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. For it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit that we pray and all of God's children said, Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 557. Blessed be the tie that binds us, the tie of love. Will you please stand and let us sing with joy.
And now, my sisters and brothers, as we prepare to take the light of Christ out into the world, may we truly remember this light is a light of love and hope. It is a light of being friends with Christ. And in that love, we begin to truly understand what joy is all about as our worries are put behind us and on the shoulder of Christ. The fear and animosity and sometimes almost hatred that we have toward others is put behind us and we love just as Jesus loved us. May we take this precious light into the world that the world may see in us not just a reflection of light, but the true light of love and hope and joy and friendship to all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, go and share this light of love with the hurting world. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Go in love. Thank you.